Hello and welcome to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Today we're looking at the fifth and final map in the Assassinateville competition. This map is called Nyx by Richard Greenslade aka Green Man. Uh, it's a pretty interesting setting, you don't normally see arctic settings in Half-Life maps. There are a couple of textures and effects that support it, which uh, Green Man's using here to great effect. Now, aside from the visuals, which I thought were interesting and fairly unique, uh, I didn't really like this map much at all. Uh, the main issue is that it uses rebels as the enemies, which are incredibly accurate and do a lot of damage. They're not really programmed the same way as other hitscan enemies in the game because generally they're on the player's side and you actually want them to do some damage. Whereas enemies in Half-Life 2, especially at Combine Soldiers, they're not really very good at damaging the player unless there's enough of them. They're really designed to keep the player entertained, whereas the Rebels are really designed to kill enemy soldiers. So when you use them as enemies, they, they're a lot more deadly and definitely a lot more forgiving. Unforgiving, I should say, as a result. Which makes this map fairly difficult to balance. The other issue is that because it's so open, it's virtually impossible to actually sneak around the level and uh, get the drop on the, the target. And speaking of the target itself for a moment, it's really hard to actually work out which of the rebels is actually the assassinate target because they all look the same and there's no real definition for who the target is or what you should be looking for. It's just one of these rebels has to die. You have no idea which one it is, especially if you set off the alarms before you find the main room. Apparently that was the target I had to kill, I, I had no idea. Which is one of the main issues with the map, there should be some sort of uh, visual or storytelling or just some mechanic in general where you know what you're looking for so that the player can, uh, you know, react accordingly when that target appears. It just feels completely random as it is at, at the moment. Now there is some attempt made to actually give the player a little bit of choice at the start of the map so there's that break in the fence you can get through. Unfortunately that's like the only way to get into the base which is a real kind of missed opportunity when you consider the layout of the map. It probably would have been a lot easier just to create a couple of gaps in the fence so the player had some choice about how to actually get in at the very start. I like the fact that there's some enemies patrolling around as well. Again this gives it some kind of quasi stealth gameplay where you can kind of watch their patrols and dodge between them though it's not really emphasized very well in the map and there's some kind of towers off in the distance with guards that you have to avoid which all sounds great but because of the just massively open layout with barely any cover and because rebels and again stealth mechanics in half-life aren't really fleshed out at all in the ai once one Rebel spots you, the entire base goes on to alert and there's absolutely no way to stop that. So I've decided to just include a little bit of uh, gameplay just going around the other side of the base. Oh, so this would have been a really short video. So you can see here even the guy staring out the window off in the distance says spots you on the opposite side of the base. And every single enemy goes on to alert. And the target is in that room, again I just destroyed him when I opened the door. And again I had no idea which one of those rebels was going to be the target. But yeah, I feel like there could have been some gameplay of getting into that building using multiple different routes. Again we saw that a lot in other maps in the competition but here it, it just feels uh, not very fleshed out at all unfortunately. Now we have to run very very quickly before we get destroyed by the uh, hyper accurate rebel soldiers. So yeah, that was Assassinate Villain in a nutshell. I think Terminus by Dan Jordan was definitely the strongest map in the competition, both visually and gameplay wise. It was a really, really fun map to play. Others came close, but weren't quite there. So, what's coming next? We've got a couple of Half-Life 2 full releases to look at. Uh, Scampy from the Quake community has been running a Let's Play series on Funk Message Board where we look at a different Quake map every week and everyone plays it and leaves their comments. So going forward I'm going to try and do a video for whatever map he decides to run just to drum up some more interest. And in the next few days we'll be doing a Quake map and a Half-Life 2 map. So enjoy, I'll see you next time.